Very often, if you go to your physician with a weird or unusual symptom, they may be dismissive. And one of the reasons for that is that very often, the difference between conventional medicine and let's say Chinese medicine is that in Chinese medicine, we look for body systems, which may have multiple symptoms. But very often in conventional medicine, you go to a specialist who deals with just one physical location or part of the body or one body system. So random symptoms may seem like they mean nothing or they connect to nothing, but that's not true in our field. Hey guys, I'm Dr. Alex Hine, author of the Health Book Master of the Day and doctor of acupuncture and traditional Chinese medicine. Now, before we jump in, there are two very important links right below the video. The first is if you'd like to become a patient of mine locally in Los Angeles or virtually via telemedicine, you can reach out to my private practice and clinic right below this video. And the second is for a free guide, which is four daily rituals that can help you add years to your life with traditional Chinese medicine. Symptom number one is waking throughout the night. So there are all kinds of insomnia in Chinese medicine. And actually biomedicine as well, right? There's onset, there's sleep latency insomnia, there's all kinds. But onset insomnia, that is being unable to fall asleep, very often in Japanese lineages of Chinese medicine is an issue with the spleen or digestion, interestingly enough. But waking throughout the night, I find very often is one part a liver dysfunction, as well as let's just call it an adrenal dysfunction. So liver and the heart and kidneys. So the heart kidneys, this, this axis is really the almost in a way the HPA axis. So when you think about adrenal stress as the lay person would call it, elevated heart rate, heart palpitations, feeling stressed or anxious. Very often my patients will just say, I just easily feel stressed. I have no resilience to stress. I get my heart rate elevated easily. I notice my heart a lot. These kinds of symptoms very often are what we consider heart and kidney. So when I utilize formulas to treat waking throughout the night, very often it is one part treating the liver, which is one of the organs that can bear the brunt of stress, as well as the heart and kidney, which we could just kind of call the adrenals. Symptom number two is constant mucus or phlegm in the throat. Most often what I find for people is that this is a constitutional feature. If this is something that is chronic and happening frequently, this is a constitutional type, right? My mother had it, my grandmother had it. You see that all the time. Now, in the absence of eating a bucket of Ben and Jerry's ice cream, and then you're like, <clears throat> you know, you're hulking up a loogie after that. Most often, if this is a chronic issue, it is an issue with the spleen. We say that the spleen hates dampness, and that is the tendency that it has. So dampness, very often, sometimes it's even just literal, the literal gut mucosa are too damp, hence the constant clearing of the throat. So very often these people have other issues with dampness, as Chinese medicine calls it, which most often are bloating, food sensitivities, a lot of gas, sometimes epigastric issues as well, and sometimes for women, yeast issues. So very common to have digestive as well as reproductive kind of yeast issues. So very often, those are main signs of dampness. Third weird symptom is tinnitus or ringing in the ears. Now there is low pitch and high pitch tinnitus, but very often, these two respectively belong to either, whether it's low pitched or high pitched, the two organs that most commonly are treated are the liver and the kidneys. Now it's interesting because there are some conventional medications that have the side effects of tinnitus, which are, I think maybe even acetaminophen overdose, one of the symptoms is tinnitus or can be one of the potential signs and symptoms if it is overdosed or taken too long over too extensive of a period of time. But tinnitus is something we very often treat from the liver and kidneys. Now, acute tinnitus, for example, I often, I most often see when there's an acute viral infection. So that is one of the times, for example, you can see people get earaches or their ears clogged. It's very common to see that with acute viral infections. And one of the organs we treat is the liver, the gallbladder, and the sanjiao or triple warmer. Those are some of the organs we typically tend to treat because they also involve the lymph. So the lymphatic system is also one of the organs that can be impaired. I mean, even the sanjiao channel goes right along in front of the ear, right in the front here. So there are all points in Chinese that have names like uh, related to hearing, for example. So clearly ancient doctors even noticed a local relationship between these organs and hearing. But very often we're treating the liver and the kidneys. And if it is a chronic tinnitus case, most often I'm treating the kidneys. Now, a fourth common symptom is headaches. Some of the most common symptoms that I see, but depending on the location, you might find it interesting what organs we're treating. Very often, frontal headaches are digestive headaches. 
So there are either issues with the spleen dash pancreas, right? These are people who have SIBO, food sensitivities, food allergies, who are prone to dizziness, fluid retention, that sort of thing. Ancient Japanese doctors called this toxic water, which is probably a chronically congested lymphatic system, which is why, for example, the primary issue, the core pattern is digestive, but they have all these secondary branch issues, which are frontal head pressure. Very often there's an issue with the liver going on there as well. A lot of people with reflux or sinus issues often get these frontal head pressure headaches. And a lot of the time it's a distending kind of pressure. It's not always a full-blown migraine or severe headache, but people often report there's a constant pressure here that just feels better when they push. It's almost always something digestive going on. Second kind of headache would be temporal headaches, right? And these temporal headaches often show up in people with migraines. So those temporal headaches, very often we treat the liver and the gallbladder. And finally, the third kind of common headache that I see are suboccipital headaches. And I like to think of these as, quote, adrenal headaches, because we are treating often the heart and the kidneys. So these are some of those organs that we're treating as a result of stress, or let's just say adrenal stress, right? When you're always living in a state of fight or flight, very common to see suboccipital tension, neck tension, and trapezius tension as well as some aspect of heart rate variability, like palpitations or an elevated heart rate. And finally, issues with hair, skin, and nails. They're some of the most commonly reported complaints to me by mostly my female patients in my practice. And very often, the nails, skin, and hair are the status or the surplus of the blood, as we call it in Chinese medicine. Now, the blood means a lot of different things. It means the hormones, it means the lubrication of the body, it's the yin, it's the engine oil. So, for example, people who exercise too much and sweat too hard will often develop issues with the blood, from our perspective. I see it all the time. People who overtrain, the pulses change, the abdomen changes, a lot of the physiological moisture in the body seems to get used up. They get prone to really chronic constipation. They get prone to really dry skin, especially as women, or brittle nails, or dry and thinning hair. Now, we say these are often liver blood deficiency. Now the blood is, I like to think of it as the engine oil, it's the lubrication in the body. Now there can be pathological processes that lead to this dryness, or there can be lifestyle, right? People can overwork and undersleep. We say that sleep is one of the main times of your life where your stores, your body stores, build themselves up again, including the liver blood. So it's common, of course, for women to report issues with their nails, their skin, and the hair. And we say that because women are more prone to these issues regarding their cycle and their menses and their hormones more than men are. So those are five weird or maybe unusual symptoms and their unusual counterparts within Chinese medicine. I know that when I was just getting into this field, I always found these kinds of connections very, very interesting because in Chinese medicine, every symptom makes sense. But sometimes in conventional biomedicine, none of the symptoms make sense. And your doctor may tell you that they are not related, but I'll tell you for sure, in Chinese medicine, they are always related. So I hope that helps you guys. Before you go, check out the two downloads right below this video to become a patient locally or to download that free guide. And I will see you guys in these other videos here.